Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And give him a hand clap of praise this morning. necessary sins and uh, today is going to be part three uh, this has been kind of a challenge because you know we did the first uh, installment and then we had um, what do we have something came up it was uh, Mother's Day and then we did the second part and then uh, we had homecoming we had a guest speaker and today we're going to do part three there is one more part to it after this but I think that uh, anytime you see any kind of a distraction it's pretty obvious that um, um, there's something going on there, and possibly even though it's the house of God and good things are going on, we don't want it, the enemy to distract us from what God's trying to teach us in this series. So, are you ready to get challenged this morning? Amen. So we're in week three. If you missed the last couple of weeks, you might ask the question that we've asked in previous weeks, what is necessary sin? What is necessary sin? Well, here, let me try to break it down. In our world today, there are some things that, regardless of the fact that the world's lost, dying, and going to hell, there's still some things that people consider sin across the board. Some of the big issues. Uh, first of all, everybody will almost always say murder is a sin. Rape is a sin. Stealing is a sin. So pretty much across the board, people will agree that these are, these are bad things. And there's a lot of things in society today that even though God may say it's wrong, that our society, our culture, tries to let us understand and realize in, in, within the realms of society that they're normal and acceptable and just a part of life. The enemy tries to use that as a tool, a way to influence you and say, well, everybody does. Everybody lies. Everybody gossips. It's acceptable. So today we're going to talk about another installment, another sin that a lot of people say that is just a part of doing life. But before we start, I want to open up with a prayer that we've been using through the weeks, and we're going to continue to use it through the end. It's a, a prayer that David prayed in the Old Testament. Uh, if you don't have your Bible, I'm going to encourage you, you can read it along on the screen. If you do, turn to Psalm 139, and we're going to be looking at verses 23 and 24. This is the prayer that we've been praying over this series. We'll be reading NIV, and I do encourage you to follow along because there is power in reading and studying the Word of God. Can anybody say amen? So here it goes. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Point out anything in me that offends you and lead me along the path of everlasting life. So what we're trying to do in this series is we're trying to realize what God says is sin. God, show us what sin Help us to get rid of it. Help us to walk on that path that you would have us to walk on, to be all that we can be in you. Amen? So today we're going to talk about the next installment. I've kind of held off to tell you that this time is one that I think is very, very relevant. It's going to touch a lot of people today. It's kind of something that a lot of people are affected by, and nobody wants to confess it or own up to it. Today we're going to be talking about lust. Somebody say amen. Okay, maybe that's why we don't have a big crowd today. Maybe they knew. Amen. But I got a little little uh, promo clip I want you to look at real quick, and then we'll get right into it. Every day I do the same thing. Hit the gym, mainly to check out the hot guy in blue. Go to work, blah, blah, blah. Have a few drinks with my girls. Go home, read Fifty Shades of whatever. Kiss my husband goodnight. Go to sleep and dream of Channing Tatum. Every day, the same thing. Lust after the hot guy, blah, blah, blah. A few drinks, 50 shades, kiss my husband goodnight, dream of Channing Tatum. Lust, drink, 50 shades, Channing Tatum. Lust, drink, 50 shades, Channing Tatum. You think these sins are avoidable? If you ask me, 
I think they're absolutely necessary. Amen. <clears throat> now understand, we're not condoning sin. We're just trying to let you realize that society has convinced us, our culture, that some things are okay. But I want to tell you right up front that in the eyesight of God, sin is sin. Small sin, big sin is equal in his eyesight. God cannot look on sin. If you're sinning, you're, hey, listen to this. And this ain't even in the notes. God has a plan for your life. God wants to bless you. God wants to make your life enjoyable. He, doesn't, he didn't create you to suffer and to be beaten down. But you know what? If you're living with sin in your life, God still loves you. But he cannot do all that he wants to do if there is sin in your life. I just Y'all need to understand that today. Somebody needs to say amen to that. So we're going to talk about today sexual lust. Sexual lust. And lust today is a serious issue. And I believe, to be honest with you, that is one of the sins that really grieves the heart of God. Amen? I mean, it's a big, it's a big deal. But in our society, in God's eyes, but in our society today, it's really not a big deal. It's, it's like acceptable. I mean, 90% of what you see on television and, and advertisement, they use uh, sexual innuendos to sell products. Because it's such a foremost thing in our minds. Amen. Come on now. People try to blow it off. And some of the excuses they say, you know, is it's not my fault. God made us this way. Or how can I fight the way I was created? <clears throat> some people say, well, you know, it's a man thing. All men battle with lust. But I want to make something clear today. And this, this is more important today than it ever has been before. Been before. Sexual lust is not just a man issue. It's a human being issue. And even though men, in, in, as a rule are more tempted by this sin, it ex doesn't exclude women. Amen? <clears throat> women are just as easily hooked at, on it as men are. Does everybody agree with that? And I, I'm told you, this is something that, you know, this is, this is one of those skeletons in the closet. This is one of those things that possibly you're struggling with, but have hidden it from your wife or your, your friends. And, and today's a good day to just come to the realization that it is unacceptable in the eyes of God. I want to give you some statistics. According to research and some polls and some different things that I've looked at, statistics say that one in six women, and that includes Christian women, are addicted to pornography. One in six women, and that includes Christian women, are addicted to pornography. That is so much of an increase from what it used to be years ago because women were sheltered. They, a lot of times they stayed at home in the 50s and raised kids and so on and so on. Society's changed. Women are out there. They want to be equal pay, equal position. And along with that, you know, comes the temptation for, for lust. And a lot of it is in the workplace, unfortunately. Amen? <clears throat> conservative studies, this is conservative, show that at least, okay, we got one in six women but conservative studies, and, and say 50% of all men struggle with pornography. And that's conservative. Some, some things you read will say it's much more than that, as high as 75%. But if you want to know something of, about this, let me tell you, how many have teenagers? Hmm. The highest users and consumers of pornography today internet-wise are teenagers from 12 to 17 12 to 17 is, is that shocking I mean it ought to it ought to be because you know why there's so much easier access today than there ever was before just about any mobile device you have an iPhone an iPad a drawer, whatever with just a few clicks they can get right there the temptation is always there amen and with a few clicks, you can get into just about anything you want on a phone nowadays. Twelve years old to seventeen years old. That's crazy. That's crazy. Especially if you find out that you're struggling with lust, if you've been compromised and you've struggled with pornography, and it's right there in your hand, the temptation is overbearing. Another reason is, at the same time, we have technology, so the, the desire to look at pornography and lust after women or men is there. We also have a greater tolerance in our society for it. Go back to what I said a few minutes ago. 
A lot of the things that you'll see just on regular television today, years ago, were not allowed. It was shameful. I, I watch mostly, you know, the reruns of like I Love Lucy and stuff, so I'm not really up to date. But every now and then I'll watch some of these new sitcoms, or they'll be on when I come in. And it just blows me away, the way that they just have no, no concern about, you know, homosexuality. And, and, you know, premarital sex and living together without being married. All these different issues that, that are unholy and unrighteous are okay. So not only do we have this ability through technology to get right there with it, we also have to struggle with the fact that our culture says that it's okay. And so everybody's doing it. It's, it's not a problem. <clears throat> Some of the things you might hear people argue, if you ever want to confront them with it, is... Uh, what I'm doing is not hurting anybody. I'm looking at it, not you. It's not bothering you. Uh, no one knows about it. That's a big one because you know what? Uh, I think I think if we were really honest today, and I'm just going on life experience with what I've people have shared with me and the different things I've seen. Uh, pick up somebody's phone by accident and click on something and go, wow, I didn't know they looked at this. I mean, I think that a lot of people do this and keep it secret from their spouses or their, or their boyfriends or girlfriends or their family. It's, it's like a sin that we excites us, but then we're shameful of it. It's kind of like dual emotions going on there. So they say it's not hurting anybody. Nobody knows about it. This is who I am. You don't know what I'm going through, so just don't judge me. And what happens is we try to justify it. We try to justify it and rationalize it. But I want to tell you that the sin of sinful lust and pornography is an addictive problem. Amen? Can somebody say amen right there? This is who I am. This is my business. It's not a big deal. Get over it. Mind your own business. What are you doing looking at my phone? Amen. If you listen today, hopefully and prayerfully through the message that God's laid here, that we'll begin to understand that there is something wrong big time in living this way. Something wrong in living this way. And I'm going to tell you right now, how many people in here are a follower of Jesus? How many profess to be disciples of Jesus Christ, blood-bought children of the King? If you're a follower of Jesus, then wouldn't you say that we most certainly have to take the words that Jesus speaks seriously? Right? I'm a follower of Jesus. Are you a follower of Jesus sometimes? Or are you a follower of Jesus all the time? I mean, I've heard y'all preach this right here. We've got to take the whole Bible, not parts of it. So if you're a follower of Jesus, then what Jesus says we got to take seriously. And if we look at what Jesus says, it's very, 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 very clear and very convicting. So let's look at some scripture. Let's back up what I'm saying. Let's look at Matthew 5, verses 27 and 28. This is a slap in the face. You have heard that it is said, do not commit adultery. Now stop right there. Back up, back up, back up, back up. Okay. That's one of them big sins. Everybody, oh, adultery, you know, okay, yeah, that's a sin. Christians are going to say that's a sin. Now look what Jesus says. But I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. That's crazy. Jesus is saying this. According to Jesus, ooh, look at that. Oh, my gosh, praise God. When you see that woman walking by, <laughs> hallelujah, thank you, Lord, woo, I've been around some of y'all, I've heard it, it's a sin, it's a sin, I won't put anybody on the spot, and I'm not going to ask you, have you read any chapters that aren't in the Bible today? But Jesus is saying that if you're looking at a woman or a man lustfully, then you might as well have done it because you're committing that sin in your heart. Amen? 
Is anybody, did you all begin to lay a foundation here? And if you're a follower of Jesus, you're going to have to agree that this is wrong and it's very dangerous. Jesus is saying it's wrong and it's dangerous. How is it dangerous? Okay, let's look at James, Jesus' brother. What James said about it, to turn to James 1 and look at 14 and 15. I'm going to give you some scripture to back it up. James 1. James said, but each one is tempted when by his own evil desire he is dragged away and enticed. Then after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to death. In other words, if you're in sin and you're not confessing the sin, you're not owning up to it, and you're not turning from it, and you just continue to let this sin go rampant in your life, you justify it, you ignore it, you just put it off, it gives birth to death. So the question, everybody's saying, death of what? 